What are some of the immediate actions that the Department of Energy is taking regarding energy infrastructure in anticipation of this hurricane? Yeah, we lead the energy, what is known as the Energy Sector Coordinating Council, which is basically a massive mutual aid society among all of the utilities in the country who may be sending resources to the area to pre-position in case of uh, outages, which we anticipate, obviously, there to be a lot of outages. And so there's 36,000 personnel that have been staged ready to help restore some communities, especially low income and black and brown communities, often wait the longest for power restoration. How are you ensuring that those who are always left behind aren't once again the last to get help? Yeah, for sure. This is so important. First of all, it's really important that uh, especially communities that have been left behind in the past know about the resources that are there to be able to help them in the immediate. And I want to, I know that people have been giving out phone numbers, um, but I want to, if I could repeat a couple of those phone numbers and if people can get a pen, because there is assistance relief for you while we get these, uh, you know, these poles back up while we get the lights back on. And so super important, the FEMA number is 1-800-621-3362. FEMA has brought in 20 million meals, uh, similar amount of water to be able to make sure that people have food. Um, there's also a number to call for those who need shelter. So the Housing and Urban Development Department really focuses, especially on those that have fewer means to be able to have shelter so that they are safe. And I'm going to give you a phone number for that as well. The housing number, it's a disaster line for HUD, is 1-800-304-9320. If you're not sure what to do in terms of your own, um, you know, and you, you don't know until, right, we know what the damage is from, from this hurricane. But if you, um, you know, your house is partially damaged or you, you're not sure exactly, you know, what to do about your mortgage payment, because maybe you have to move out. Maybe there, there's other reasons why you need assistance. There is a counseling number that HUD has to be able to help walk people through what their options are for shelter. And that is... Another 1-800 number, 1-800-569-4287. So we want to make sure people people get their power back on. Florida is pretty good about this about because uh, they've got experience in doing it. But it's, you know, because we don't know what this the scope of the damage will be. We want to make sure people are armed with the numbers to call to get resources. And given the scope of this huge hurricane, how quickly could we possibly, just a prediction, expect the restoration of power in affected areas? You know, it's so hard because it's you've got not just the wind, but the storm surge, obviously. And that, you know, if there's massive flooding as a result of the storm surge, that takes a little bit longer. So it's, it's so hard to predict. I will say, though, you know, Florida, after Helene, was, um, you know, pretty much came back online. Um, whereas in other states, like in North Carolina and, and some parts of Georgia, there isn't as much, there may not be in those states, in those places, as much experience as Florida has with dealing with, with hurricanes. So you're, you're fortunate that you have a utility set that understands how this works. So one would hope that it's within, you know, a few days that people's power will be back on, but we just have to see what that, what that damage is. And recently headlines were made. Vice President Harris said Governor Ron DeSantis wasn't taking calls. And then Biden said that DeSantis was taking the calls. And it seems like there's a lot of politics getting involved during a disaster. How is the department coordinating with state and local authorities to ensure a rapid response? And yeah, has we politics um, caused any slowdowns in those communications? No, it has not. And um, fortunately, people seem to be putting their politics to the side while they serve people. I won't, I'll say that's not true for a lot of rumors and uh, misinformation that's online. And I think it's really important that people, you, you listen to your local officials, to the Red Cross, to FEMA, uh, to make sure you're getting the truth. If you, you know, there's a lot of scam artists out there and a lot of people who are trying to manipulate folks for their own political reasons or whatever. You're, there is resources. There are resources available for you. Nobody wants to take your property. That is just a complete lie. That's one of the lies that's been 
promulgated out there. We want to make sure you are safe and that you have the resources you need to get through the storm and then to rebuild afterward. And there's one other um, quick thing, Chris, I just want to mention, which is, um, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about how, about evacuation, et cetera. You don't have to leave the state necessarily. You just have to maybe travel, you know, 10 miles or whatever to get to your nearest shelter. You can call that FEMA line to find out where the nearest shelter is. There's a state disaster uh, recovery line too, you know, and that that shelters will protect you during the storm and then you can be closer to home when you when you recover. So it's not like people have to, you know, flee uh, to, you know, to Georgia or something like that. You you can you can stay in the vicinity, just get out of the line of where it's predicted the storm will go. Storm will go. And we've seen more and more weather events like this just getting more and more extreme. So is there anything that the department's doing as far as long-term <laughs> strategies to prepare for these these ongoing extreme hurricane and weather events? Yeah, this is such an important question, both the cause and then the preparing for these extreme weather events. This is not going to be the last series of big storms that hit Florida. This is this is going to be a continued thing unless we get our act together on climate change. The Gulf is 10 degrees warmer than it normally is. That fuels these hurricanes. And so why is that? It's because we have been emitting all of these greenhouse gases into the atmosphere that's trapping heat, that's causing the oceans to warm and causing these hurricanes to happen. So on prevention, one of the best ways we can do that is to continue to accelerate toward clean energy where we are not putting pollutants in the air that exacerbate this problem. And in terms of rebuilding in a way that makes us resilient, it is important that the infrastructure that we rebuild with is strong infrastructure. Now, you know, if you have 180 miles per hour winds, there's almost no infrastructure that can be certain to survive, but there are certain ways that we know work better than others. And so rebuilding with that in mind is important. Some of that infrastructure is a little more expensive. And so we have, we're gonna go back to Congress to ask for more money for FEMA for rebuilding in a way that ensures more resiliency for these storms into the future. All right. And lastly, is there anything else you'd like to add that you feel we didn't cover or may be important for listeners in the Tampa Bay area? This God bless you all. Get out of the way of this storm. Be safe. Listen to the authorities. And I hope we can talk on the other side.